Good evening, folks. It is Sunday, the 8th of May, and this is the Factivist Report. Tonight's topic, in spite of the fact that it's Mother's Day, is uh, Roe v. Wade and its imminent overturn, the implications for women everywhere, the implications for other decisions that are based on Roe v. Wade. This will be a topic for at least two weeks, potentially more, um, as this is a rapidly developing situation here in the United States of oppression. Um, and also a quick announcement that the website is going live tomorrow. Um, I do have work to do on it this evening. I do have work to do on it early tomorrow morning. It will probably go live somewhere afternoon time. I will post that it's going live uh, on social media and the plan is going to be for me to take it down every Monday. Actually, let's just say Sunday night. Sunday night. Yep. To Monday uh, to finish up working on it. Um, it will never be a site that is complete. It will always be evolving and changing. Um, for example, uh, what you will see today is um, I did work on a woman's section and then the Roe v. Wade uh, decision was leaked and I immediately added uh, another page. So, you know, as I said, this is going to be a, a, a continually evolving website um, and uh, it will go live. There will be sections to be completed and we will put those up as we finish them. So without further ado, let's turn this over to Dave and we're going to talk about Roe v. Wade. Now, the first thing that I want to tell everyone is Yes, I am a real person. My name is Dave Denton. I also go by the name of Independent Outsider. I've been doing this with Deb since I believe 2018. Um, there are, there is a website that we have up on Facebook or a, a group called Defend Roe v. Wade. I understand that many women are suspicious of men. Um, I am not most men. Uh, Deb wouldn't have me on this show if, I'm, <laughs> if I was, had the opinion of most men. So understand there are allies out of the, out there, and I am one of them. Dave uh, one, slept on my sofa. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. He slept on my sofa at an, uh, you know, after an Assange protest in Boston. So, yeah, most guys don't get to sleep on my sofa, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so... Here, here's the thing, too. I also see, and we'll go into some of the stuff with the Defend uh, Roe v. Wade group. One thing that's very encouraging to me is that many people are looking for rallies and looking for events. Number one, I'm, I, alongside uh, Deb and other people in this group, we're going to be working on helping people organize to a point. You have to do the work, too, by the way. Um, you can contact us. Uh, we'll help you as best as we can. Um, you also, how, by the way, if you do organize in your area, um, we will put up an event on the Ro Defend Roe v. Wade page. By the way, yes. that membership in less than five days has gone from 180 people to almost 1,700. Um, so... I really wish we could have done this a year ago when Sarah and I were trying to get everybody out on the streets then. It didn't work. Now we're at critical stage. All right. We are at the stage. Uh, the point of no return is here. And <laughs> let me let me just say this. This could be a done deal. But we cannot stop pushing for this. Right. Just, you know, it just has to be. And, it, you know, let me just say this again. The Republicans cannot be returned to power. The two parties are not the same. And we're actually producing a document. We're having a rally in Boston on the 15th, next Sunday. Sarah and I are going to be out in front of the State House. Now, there are there is rallies going on today. There are rallies going on next Saturday. We're going to be out there next Sunday. This needs to keep going. It can't just be for a few weeks and then it dies. Okay? This needs to keep on going. So 
uh, we're actually producing, going to produce a document that explains why the parties aren't the same. Um, it's not rocket science, and, and we'll show you that. And once that's available, I'll make that available as a PDF as well. So uh, let's let's get on with the with the rally rallies and rallies and protests are fine, but it needs to turn to voting, which turns to legislation, which turns to action. This yeah. is going to be a long process. It took 50 years to overturn Roe v. Wade. We will get it a little bit into the history of Roe v. Wade, some of the other decisions, but mostly Roe v. Wade and why why this happened and what we have to do to fight this. Yeah, One of the things we don't have 50 years. No, me, we don't. Let me just tell you what's going on. This is not just the problem isn't just Roe v. Wade. In every Republican led state in this nation, they are test driving authoritarian regimes. OK, take a look at Florida. He is yep. amazingly getting away with stuff. He has such command over his legislature that they gave him the, the, the responsibility to redistrict the entire state. All right. And he disenfranchised millions of, of voters of color. People need to understand that we don't have 50 fucking years to play around with the Republican Party. They are no longer the Republican Party of George W. Bush, which was bad enough. They are owned by Donald Trump, and that has not gone away. It will not go away. All right. The only thing that's going to make that go away is to take the people in office now out of power. This week, I am not going to be talking, most of this is not going to be talking about the politics, the candidates, all of that. I will get there. Trust me, I will get there because that's very important for people to know. Uh, I will introduce a couple of them, uh, one on the Republican side and one on the Democratic side. It, it does it does happen that you have some pretenders out there who say they're Democrat and are actually anti-rights so but i will mostly be talking about the history be, because before we fight anything we need to know what the basis of that fight is what the strategies that didn't work were and what the strategies that do work are and what deb and i have been saying for about two three years now we need to fight these issues. And by the way, it's not just abortion, it's contraception, same-sex marriage, cohabitation and fornication laws, which means uh, sex outside of wedlock. Interracial so, marriage. Interracial marriage. Those are the issues that they are attacking right now. Every single one of those issues were fought and won on the exact same argument that Roe v. Wade was. And they I will get there. all susceptible for attack now, okay? It could fall like a house of cards. It could fall like a stack of dominoes. And, you know, the worst thing that people do is sit back and let it happen. It, you, just, you just need to also understand this. There's a lot of chatter out there about revolution. Um, let me talk to you about this. We were in that chatter mode for a while. All right. Yep. They are overturning your rights and taking over, not by conducting a revolution. They are doing this by working in this system. They are passing legislation. They are repealing people's rights by using this system. That is the way we have to fight back now. We don't have time for a revolution. The attack on the Capitol didn't change anything. It didn't change anything. It just empowered the evil, okay? That's all it did. But Donald Trump is not the president. It did not reinstall Trump. That is not what we're looking for. We are looking for people to take, take a look at this seriously. Stop talking about the new world order. It's fucking here, okay? So let's get on with this show before- All right, I let's go. Before up. before you have an aneurysm. Yeah, really. <laughs> so hold I on. one this morning online, so- all right. Before we, before we get started, I wanted to show a resource that I've showed before. There are a couple of resources here that I want people to be aware of in case they want to research some of the cases that I will be talking about. Each fundamental issue, whether it be interracial marriage, whether it be contraception, whether it be abortion, 
each one of these has cases attached to them. Uh, I may be talking about them. Um, I won't go into detail about most of them, except for, of course, Roe v. Wade. There's even a case that was was argued later. It was, it was Casey back in 1992, which also you're going to hear. I'm not going to go into much detail on that. But just know that there are resources. There's another resource I'm going to show you later. Oh, yes, you can search these cases. Make sure you spell the names right, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to find them. They don't they don't do like a an autocorrect or anything like that. So like some like some of these. You know, you know, this is blank, right? No, I know. OK, it's white. Wait, it's a white screen. It's a white screen, it's a white page, right? That you have up right now. It says Bing dot com search. But that's no weird. There's because no hold on, hold on. Let's try this again because I have my 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 screen had the Supreme Court site on it. This is the way we started when we did the pre-screen. So I know that. Is it there you go? Okay. This is a Supreme Court site. Supreme Court.gov. Okay. Uh I actually had a search up for Overfell. That is the uh case. Uh, in regards to gay marriage that people refer to a lot. So you just put in a search term, whether it be Roe v. Wade, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, whatever it is, if you're looking for a particular case. We spoke about a gentleman running in Michigan, and we thought that he was going to win. We really did because it was a Republican majority district. Yep. Robert Regan, he ran his big mouth all the way out of his own office. Uh, this was the gentleman that said that if rape is inevitable, he told his daughters just to lie down and enjoy it. So uh, the person who who ran against him was Democrat Carol Glanville. One of the things that we can learn from this is, number one, we need to win these kind of seats back, the state legislatures, all of that, because that's going to affect uh, codifying, which I will get into and a bit basically making rights into law state by state. We are now going to be in that boat where the argument that Roe v. Wade is of uh, the overturning Roe v. Wade is presenting is that this is a state by state issue. So codifying a right into law is making it a legal right to have an abortion in the state. That's what the or gay marriage or whatever it is. So these people are very important. Don't think that just because an area is predominantly Republican, Democrat, whatever, that these people can't be defeated. They can be. And if any candidates are listening, this is the way you beat these people. These candidates attack them, attack them directly. Do not attack the voters saying they're stupid or whatever. That's not the way to do it. Let them do that. Just saying. Now, let me just say something about this. 11 points is a pretty big win. Um, <clears throat> so let me say. Um, there's a lot of chatter out there, particularly in the conservative media, that the Roe v. Wade decision won't hurt the midterms for the Republicans. That's that's bullshit. You can make it hurt the Republicans. All right. It's stay on point. Go after them. This is what needs to be done across this country. Um, you know, they want to say that it's not going to hurt the Republicans. So they want you to just say, oh, what? I I'm just going to give up. It, that's what they're looking for. Don't listen to that bullshit. OK, the, the other side of this argument is don't think, hey, we got this in a bag. I can stay home right? because this leak. No one knows from which side this was leaked. It was leaked. But 
it could have been from the Republican side to invigorate the religious right. It could have been. It could have been on the Republican side to encourage the states to start filing their legislation. This is, too. this is what happens. Um, you know, of course, Lindsey Graham's blaming the the um, the Democrats, you know, and of course, the left, the right is blaming uh, Sonia Sotomayor. I've even heard that that ridiculous accusation. Um well, but, her clerk, her clerk, her clerk, or whatever. They were they were blaming Kentaji Brown Jackson, who doesn't have any access to any files yet. Right. And, and by the way, <laughs> I personally believe whoever leaked this is a whistleblower, in my opinion. Um, right. But the fact of the matter is, uh, the notion that this diminishes the court stature that Lindsey Graham was talking about, and and what's his name, uh, you know, Uncle Tom there on the Supreme Court. Oh yeah, Clarence Thomas. Yeah, Clarence Thomas. You know, the notion that this is, you know, disparaging the court, the court has disparaged itself, okay? This is, this is, it's nothing to do with this, okay? The Supreme Court has long been a political entity. It is not an entity that is devoted to carrying out constitutional, interpreting constitutional law. So let's get, let's not get ridiculous here. For those of, the, of you who are interested in more about what, who Robert Regan is from Michigan, uh, there's a short video from MSNBC. Uh, I can rec- I can I can recommend it. Um, just take a quick look. It's about two minutes. Yeah, it's worth it. My point. My point too is this man cannot be all in office. He is a radical. I don't care if it's dog catcher. I don't care if it's a school board. I don't care what it is. Keep this man out of office. Right. Anybody who will talk that way about his own daughters cannot respect anybody else. So Now, this is on the Democratic side, and I understand it is Texas. But from my understanding, this is the only Democratic anti-abortion candidate candidate and he is an incumbent he's in office right now so this is representative quaylar of texas understand deb talks a lot about you know we're only going to vote democrat well you got to be careful every once in a while one of these guys falls through the cracks and you have to know who your candidate is yeah so what we're saying is you have to know who your candidate is and it, it doesn't really matter they all need to be primary. Uh, you know, the, the Democratic Party, or people need to step up to the plate and primary them. You know, and I'm going to say that needs to happen with uh, uh, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, too. I don't care how yep. powerful Joe Manchin is. He needs to be primary. Somebody needs to stand up. And, you know, he's not even taking care of his own constituents. So let's let's not get to the point where we think we need him. We don't need him. He nine nine tenths of the time he's on the other side of the fucking aisle. He, the way to push this back to the left is to get out and vote. Right. We were in that boat to oh it doesn't matter blah blah blah. If it didn't matter, there wouldn't be so much push on this. If it didn't matter, so much messaging. If it didn't matter, we wouldn't have had Donald Trump. And if it didn't matter, they wouldn't be so concerned about their votes being counted. It does matter. Okay. Right. So I want people to understand just a little bit, just a tiny bit of what Roe v. Wade is and the history of abortion or back in the back in the day, back in the early days, what they called quickening. Um, what what this is all about. So. By the way, this was never about the children. Yeah, please. <laughs> Um, until the late 19th century, abortion was legal in the United States before the quickening at a, the point at which a woman could first feel movements of the fetus, typically around the, fir- uh, the fourth month. OK, so. We have in the late 1850s, the newly established AMA or Medical American Medical Association began calling for the criminalization of abortion partly in an effort to eliminate doctors' competitors, <laughs> such as midwives and homeopaths. So again, not about the children. It's about you know, other, uh, other factors. And back in the 1850s, 1860s, 
they were worried about the Great Reset even back then. This idea that the white man were, was going to be replaced by the people they brought over or by, you know, by immigrants. Additionally, some nativists alarmed, and by the way, they're not nativists. The Native Americans were nativists, but anyway, alarmed by the country's growing population of immigrants were, born, or were anti-abortion because they feared declining birth rates among white American-born Protestant women. Okay. Abortion was banned by the Catholic Church in 1869 at any stage of pregnancy. Uh, there is something called the Comstock Law, which made it illegal to distribute any anti, uh, any abortion-inducing drugs or anything that was preventative, uh, pregnancy uh, preventative. Now, later on, contraceptives were made legal for married couples only, and then years later, it was for everybody. Now, let me just say this. You'll notice the, look at the, the, the part of that where it's above in 1965, look at the paragraph above. During the 1960s, during the women's rights movement, court cases involving contraceptives laid the groundwork for Roe v. Wade. People who think that activism doesn't work need to understand nope. that that's the only way we've ever gotten anything in this country as women, including the right to vote, which they also would like to see taken away. So in 1965, the Supreme Court struck down a law banning the distribution of birth control to married couples. And then later on, 1972, the Supreme Court struck down a law prohibiting the distribu distribution of contraceptives to unmarried adults. Now, these rights, they're talking about stripping them away. Because all of these, and I'll, I'll get into it, especially when talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her argument, um, all of these decisions were based on one premise. So, and that's the 14th Amendment and the right to privacy. This is who Roe was. These cases, by the way, are based on real live people. They're not just concepts. We, we kind of talk about Roe v. Wade being a concept, almost. Uh, in 1969, Norma McCorvey, she was a, a, a woman in her early 20s who had already had two children. She was very poor. She gave up two children for adoption. She could not afford to take a third child to term. And she lived in Texas where... Abortion was only legal to save the life of a mother. So she went to uh, she went to lawyers, and they they fought this case. Um, while American women with financial means could obtain abortions by traveling to other countries where the procedure was safe and legal or pay a large fee to a U.S. doctor willing to spend a secretly perform an abortion, those options were out of reach to McCorvey and many other women. As a result... I don't think that that won't be the case today either. Yes. Rich white women won't have a problem. Right. As a matter of fact, um, even though she walked it back... Uh, some of the um, what's her name from uh, TYT, mm -hmm. Anna Kasparian. She said she said as much. Yeah. Whether rich white women well, everywhere, whether it be, back. I'm not going to walk it back. Okay. No, she's not. She's a chicken. Kid, so I'm <laughs> not. Know. I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, she's talking about you know. Yeah, yeah. She's attacking the Democrats. Whatever. So um, yeah, I know. As a result, some women resorted to illegal, dangerous back alley abortions or self-induced abortions. Many of these women died. Yep. So uh, in 1950s and 1960s, the estimated number of illegal abortions in the United States ranged from 200,000 to 1.2 million. Now, the Guttmacher Institute is a fantastic resource. That's another fantastic resource. Yep. For many things, by the way. but. 
<clears throat> they're, they're really excellent. After trying unsuccessfully to get an illegal abortion, McCorvey was referred to Texas attorneys Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington, two female attorneys who were interested in challenging the anti-abortion laws. Now, Henry Wade was the district attorney where, where McCorvey lived. And he was high powered. He prosecuted Jack Ruby. So that's what they were fighting. So. These are some, I'm not going to go into, into all this, but. These are stories these are, these are worth of, of the women that, that were affected. I'll, I'll read one or two. There's also a story uh, somewhere in here of a group called the Janes who would help transport women and send them to get abortions. Let's see here. One thing you will notice is that a lot of these, all of these women are in their 70s or 80s. And I think that given the fact that these these cases are like 50 years uh, old, that people forget over time. So it was spring of my sophomore year in college in 1968. I was in Laramie at Wyoming University. The word was in Laramie because uh, we're quite close to the Colorado Wyoming border. It's about 50 miles. If you knew that right, folks, you could drive to Colorado where doctors might prov provide illegal abortions. I was in a relationship with a man I had essentially been with since the seventh grade. I didn't take the decision of what to do lightly. And by the way, these, this idea that women are just, you know, doing this as like a weekend jaunt or something. It's, it, I, I can't, it, this is a very extremely difficult decision. Right. By the way, let me just say this. The From what I've heard. They don't want abortion. They don't want birth control. So what the fuck are you supposed to do? Just keep either spitting out children or you don't have sex. So let's right. shut off every man in America. Let's shut them all off. Okay. Is that what we, is that where we're going or is it going to be forced marriage and forced birthing? You think it can't happen here? You better wake up. By the way, to all the men out there that may be listening to this, um, don't take it personal. But I'm not in a mood. I'm not in a good mood right now. Just so you know. Just think about this. Uh, you want to get a vasectomy, and your your insurance company won't cover it. Or you want to get Viagra, they won't allow you to get it. Or they want you to get whatever, they won't allow you to get it. Guy, guys will get. The jiggity and even more upset. So I don't well, want to hear it. Well, one of the things you, one of the things you, you, you know, that we maybe should consider if this is going to go down that road is, you know, let's push for laws. Uh, if if you know men uh, are the other half of the equation on a baby created out of wedlock, maybe it should be required that there's a paternity test, and if the man is the actual father, he's required to provide financially for the child. Let's start putting some fucking teeth into the shit we're talking about. It, this, right. it should not just be the woman in this. Give me a break. Okay. Again, it's called male supremacy. Fuck that shit. Once the man, once the man is notified and he should be notified and should be notified within a certain amount of time, he should be partially responsible. I will get into some of that. There's all this thing about Ben's rights and all this crap. Yeah. I will get into that. I will get into that. And I agree Bullshit. mostly, mostly okay. with them. Don't start it. Don't stop me. Don't stop me. I'm not. I'm not because we have a lot of we have a lot of ground to cover. Go ahead. I'll start you. I'll start you next week. Okay. Um so when it became evident that we were not going to get married, I started inquiring as to what, how, when, and where. I had a sorority sister at the time who was from Colorado. I took her aside. We had a conversation. She just had a friend who was in Denver who was in the same situation that I was. There was a kind of third party. I found out about this provider in Colorado. I called, and of course, the first thing right up front was that all procedures were to be paid in cash up front. 
this is like uh, five hundred seventy-five dollars, and I don't know the transfer. Like five hundred seventy-five dollars in nineteen sixty-eight is how much it has to be several thousand dollars. Oh yeah, in nineteen sixty-eight, it was my money, the young man's money, the father's money, which doesn't always happen. Yeah, no. And money's from some of our friends. I can testify to that fact. <laughs> <laughs> there were uh, not uh, from my personal experience, but from someone close to me. There were very, very few people who knew about the predicament. In those days, it was considered really risky. And so you can count on one hand the people that I was telling. A friend offered to drive me to Denver, and the instructions were that I were to register at the hotel motel thing, not far from the provider's office in northern Denver. Register there. And after the procedure, I was to go back and spend the evening in the motel, come back and see him in the morning. Went in the back door, just me remember being scared to death because I didn't know what to expect. They were going to inject me with something that went in a few hours result in a miscarriage. Gave the money. I had the procedure. My friend and I went back to the motel a few hours into the evening. Nothing was happening. Nothing. <laughs> I thought, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I've just handed this person $575 and maybe this was all a hoax. I said to my friend, I want to go back to Laramie. I'm incredibly uncomfortable here. I'm scared to death. Let's just go back. We got in the car, drove back to Laramie. And about this time, we got to the outskirts of town, which means it's almost sunrise. I started having contractions that went through the entire day. The following night, without having uh, passed a fetus, I got scared and thought, what in the world? My friend drove me to the hospital. I spent the next two days in the hospital. End of the school year, so people were moving out of the sorority house. Lots of activity. Nobody really realized I was gone for a couple of days. The physicians or the providers of the hospital kept press pressuring me to tell tell me to tell them what happened. They thought I'd sort of saw an abortion. One of the providers, and he was a provider here for a long time, very well prospected. He came to my bedside and said, Susie, if you don't pass the fetus here in the next few hours, we're going to have to have a surgical procedure. You know you're there. What do you say? Luckily, I passed it. That was it. The follow-up is that I had a hefty bill in the hospital. So she paid $575 and she she had medical issues after the fact. So um, four years later, I was working in Denver. I got on an elevator. There was the doctor who had performed the abortion. I remembered his face. I just, you know, punched the next floor, got off the elevator. He was very scary. My take was in a strange way. He got pleasure out of the fact that I was at his mercy. Um, and there are several others here. Well, they can read them. You know, they, can, they can do that. Yeah. I, I would advise you. I would, I would not, not advise you, but I would suggest that you do read some of these. I read the whole article. It was excellent. This, I mean, there are cases where, <laughs> women died of infections where there were women in halfway houses trying to, you know, trying to have miscarriages. Deb has showed her, her coat hanger, not that she personally used, but trying to get people to understand that people did use these and back in the, back in the past, wire coat hangers. So. This upcoming is what would have what would the end of row mean? Key questions and answers. Now, this is a New York Times article. This is a very basic article, basically lays it out that if Roe v. Wade ends, it will mean that this is now turned to the states in a state decision, which yeah. means that every single person that is concerned about the rights of anyone, man, woman, anyone, to do what they want with another consenting adult needs to vote against people that do not believe in these rights. The other thing uh, that um, I wanna say is again, <clears throat> what 
when you look at, there is somewhere a map uh, that shows the breakdown of, of the states where yeah. we're um, Again, you will see uh, that we are not one people, okay? <laughs> there are, you know, states where it is protected. Massachusetts is one of them. Um, New York is another. New York will be another. Um, yep. But I want to caution people not to think that just because you're in a state where it's protected, um, that they're, you know, in the clear. All it will take is returning, is putting in that state Republicans, Republican governors or, you know, Republican legislature. Um, look, for better or for worse, folks, the Republican Party you're looking at right now is an extreme right party. The fringe is no longer the fringe. It is the face of the GOP. So you are not safe with any Republican in there because every Republican is proved already that they are going to tow the Trump party line. So what I will say before I, before I go forward is that, yes, I am aware that uh, Biden, that Schumer and others are trying to codify uh, nationally abortion as a legal right. Uh, my, my fear with that is, Number one, it's not going to get passed anyway. They need to try. They need to try. However, when the Supreme Court case comes, they're going to overrule it because it's it's ruling that it's the matter of the states. So I don't know how how even if they won, which are not going to, if it would if it would stand. Uh, what you have to understand now is that now that it is a matter of the states, the legalization of abortion could go back and forth but uh, in your state, right? depending on whether it's a Republican or a Democratic assembly and governor. Right. Now, I think that personally, an opinion is that Lee Zeldin, as a Republican in New York State, which is highly progressive or liberal, however you want to put it, that really hurt him. I, I I think he had a shot. I don't know if he has a shot now, but you guys have to vote against him. Right. Um, so now in, if in Massachusetts, we have a, an odd situation because we have a Republican governor who is not like most other Republicans, I have to say, uh, but he, right. he does support a woman's right to choose. However, he did not sign the original bill that was passed by the Massachusetts legislature to codify uh, abortion because there were a couple of things in it he did not agree with. However, he also knew that he would be overridden. Right. Uh, so he was overridden. His, his veto was overridden and it passed. And he has now openly stated uh, in the Boston Globe that he will protect a woman's right to choose above all other things. He is you know, abiding by the past law. So it is right. incumbent upon us in Massachusetts to put a Democratic governor in because there are Trump endorsed people running in this state, one woman and one male. OK, the male is a lunatic from what I remember. Yes. Jeff yes. Deal. Yeah. yeah, the woman's not much better. She's kind of a freaking loon, too. So. If Roe were overturned, abortion would not become illegal everywhere in the United States, but it would become illegal based on the state that you are in and based on the people that you elect, not based on your opinion as to what you want to do with your body. So see that shot right down the bottom? That that map? Yeah. Those are the states that are going to ban abortion. Um. And you know, they, they are there are these things called abortion pills, um, and there are these things. There are there is travel to other states. You have to understand that some state legislatures are writing into them that people cannot leave the state to get an abortion, and some governors are trying to ban those pills. You need to understand what's going on in your state. In, in Tennessee, Governor Bill Lee, and I'll get into it a little bit, um, has made it illegal. And I can't remember the uh, punishment, it, you know, how much jail time, what fine it is to transport abortion pills uh, 
from Tennessee and to Tennessee. Being a United States postal worker for as long as I have been, over 20 years, I know that now not only can you not do it to and from, you can't ship through that state. So the more states that become illegal, the more difficult it is to get those ships uh, pills shipped. So, you know. All right. Just so you know, the other thing, too, that's happening across this country uh, is the morning after pill, which is not. An that's what I'm talking about. No, OK, but wait, that, that's not an abortion pill. OK, they are. The, the right wing is characterizing the morning after pill yep. as an abortion pill. It is not all it does. It does not kill a fetus. All it does is prevent a woman from ovulating. All it does is stop the process of ovulating. It has nothing to do with abortion. And they're even trying to stop that. And that is patently absurd. What I will say too is, again, before I go, there are a lot of terms that we need to turn around. Uh, pro-life, these people are not pro-life. No, there was a tick. There was a TikToker who put her opinion on our Roe v. Wade page. I salute you and say hello to you because I completely agree that that's a bullshit term. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it just is. Yep. You are a, you are anti-abortion and you are anti-choice. How do you like that? I'll turn it around. Yep. So now I'm going to get into Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And buckle up, guys, because this could be a two-hour video. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna motor through this as as long as we have to. I, I think we need to do this all in one. So I, however long it takes. Now, the ironic thing about Ro, uh, about Ruth Bader Ginsburg is that her initially people thought that she was anti women's rights. She critiqued Roe v. Wade based on the argument that it was based on. She argued that arguing Roe v. Wade, even though it may be expedient and may in the in the short term save lives and 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 help alleviate a dangerous situation at the time, in the long run, it would be easier to overturn. And she was absolutely right. This, 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 uh, this argument was based on the 14th Amendment and the right to privacy. So by the way, this, this article really was based on a, uh, her, Although, or her biography, rather. So Professor Mary Hartman co-authored the uh, biography, which Deb is reading. Did you finish it yet? I haven't finished it yet. I haven't finished it yet, but it's the one. notorious uh, RBG. Yeah. The Life and Times of Ruth Betty Ginsburg. It's really excellent. So Alicia Gupta, I'm not going to try the middle name I, or the maiden name, whatever. I, I, I just, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, so she would say you would just have to move forward and get to work. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg wasn't fond of Roe v. Wade, the landmark Supreme Court decision that in 1973 established a constitutional right to abortion because of the way it was structured. Right. And the nature of this this argument. She was, however, a fierce advocate for women's rights. And by the way, for Alito to use her uh, <clears throat> to, you know, explain the overturning of Roe v. Wade is highly disingenuous. Because I can tell you this: she may never. Uh, have liked this, but if she were sitting on the court today, she would never have voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. I promise you. The ironic part is, and I will get into Alito in a few minutes, he is making our argument for us that <laughs> that the that Roe v. Wade was structurally, uh, it was argued incorrectly, but the basis of that argument 
was always gender equality, women's rights, and the and the rights for everyone, right. the right to choose, right. which will once once the cards fall and we have to fight this again, we're going as if if we win the abortion argument and it is uh, it is overturned once again or changed once again guess what all of the others will fall into place just like they're falling into place now what is going to have to happen is and this is going to take some time once the roe v wade and Casey versus Planned Parenthood, which is a case that was argued in 1992, which changed some of the details of the decision of Roe v. Wade. Again, not going to get too much into that one. All of this is fluid. What happens is, is if you want to change a decision, you have to find a case that is different enough unless you have a right wing court that doesn't give a shit about precedent, you have to find another case, try it and win it. And it takes time. That's what they did with the case that they're looking at right now. It was the Mississippi 15 week ban. And now it's going to, you know, in some States, six weeks, you know, you know, it's again, um, this is how the court works. Every opinion is based on other opinions. And, and then you've got to go back and rework things. And this is just the way the, the legal system works. And this is why it is this way. Uh, it doesn't mean I think it's right. I, I don't think, you know, again, you know, I believe in civil liberties across the board. I think we need to rewrite the Bill of Rights and make it ironclad so that nobody can legislate against it. But that's, a, that's an even bigger battle than this, actually. So... so Ironically, there was early criticism by feminists of Ruth Bader Ginsburg when Bill Clinton nominated her for the Supreme Court in 1993, uh, worried that she wouldn't protect the decision. And I believe I don't know if Casey versus Planned Parenthood had already been decided. I don't know. And, but it was right around that time, though. Uh, of course, they eventually realized that justice Ginsburg's skepticism of Roe v. Wade wasn't driven by a disapproval of abortion access, but by her wholehearted commitment to it. She so, was a smart person. She just was, you know, she was, in my opinion, in, in my lifetime, she's the best Supreme Court justice I, I have ever seen. I've, I've liked her from the beginning. So this is this is the key for Justice uh, Ginsburg. The way she saw it was that Roe v. Wade was focused on the wrong argument. The restricting access to abortion violated a woman's privacy. What she hoped for instead was a protection of the right to abortion on the basis of that restricting it impeded gender equality, which would have helped with other arguments and, you know, with other things when it comes to contraception, when it comes to any sexual choices of adults. So, as we said, Alito used Ginsburg and twisted her words saying that it was a weak argument but he is setting himself up or setting this case up to ultimately fail. Unfortunately, it's going to take some time to push it. So I'm not going to read all of these. You guys can read, but there's a few that I want to, uh, that I want to bring up. Uh, we hold that that this is from a political argument. Politico did some really good. They were the ones that initially uh, published the leak, by the way. So this is 10 key passages from Alito's draft opinion, which would overturn Roe v. Wade. This is Josh Gerstein of May 2nd of this year. So these are some of the the 
things that he said. We hold that Roe v. Wade, Roe and Casey must be overruled because the Constitution makes no reference to abortion. And no such right is implicitly uh, protected by any constitutional provision. Now, by the way, he also uh, he also quoted someone, which we will get into from the 1600s, I think it was, before the Constitution was even 17th century. A 17th century. Jurist. OK, I believe we kind of fought for our freedom from the British. So what the actual fuck? That does not work. <laughs> Uh, Roe was egregiously wrong for the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences. And far from bringing about a national settlement on the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division. By the way, who gives a shit? Exactly. Uh, uh, okay, way, that doesn't mean anything. To a national settlement on anything. So we have 30, <laughs> 35 million people a whole fucking portion of the country that has never gotten over the fact that they lost the Civil War, and we will never agree, never, on anything. So are we, gonna, are we going to give slaves back to white supremacists to shut them up and, and to make everybody happy? No, of course not. This is not about making keeping people happy and keep, keeping people pacified and, and trying to um, shore divisions. That's ridiculous. Uh, Roe and Casey have been flame debate and deep in division because of stupid arguments like this. Time to so, heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people elect uh, people's elected representatives. Where did the Constitution ever mention abortion? Right above the top, he's talking about the fact that no rights were guaranteed there. Where is it mentioned? You know, in point two, it isn't. It isn't. This is the one. This is the one that's extremely dangerous. This is the one I'm going to end. I'm going to end with this. The inescapable conclusion is that a right to abortion is not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. On the contrary, an unbroken tradition of prohibiting abortion on pain of criminal punishment persisted from the earliest days of common law until 1973. And remember. I just read from the History Channel, what were the reasons for that? They were not, I mean, they were not about equality. They were not about all men are created equal. We'll get into women. You know, I don't like that whole part of it, but all persons, all citizens should be all citizens are created equal, honestly. But life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness OK. These are rights that should be inherent. Right. People should have the right to choose. And this was this is a religious. Um, this is based on religious history and tradition. And by the, the nation's way, history and nation. OK, so right. there is no room for religion in the constitution or in politics or in government, none, zero. So the deeply rooted idea of the nation's history and traditions in regards to this, number one is it's financially driven. They wanted abortions to because they didn't want to compete with the medical industry. And number two, cat, get down, thank you. Um, and number two, or maybe she won't, um, um, number two, it was Catholic, and it was a religious decision. The right. Catholic Church made this illegal. Right. So, and the third, my third point on this, not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. Protecting Native American rights is not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. Protecting African American rights is not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. Protecting women's rights has not been protecting, you know, 
Well, I miss L. Uh, the LGBTQ community has not been deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. Fact, That's what the he's getting at. Has been deeply rooted in the history's nation, in the history of the nation and its traditions, is the rights of the white male. You know whether you want to face it or not. Sorry, Dave, but that is a fact. No, I hey, <laughs> I hold my hands up. I didn't do it, but I, I, I understand it. For everybody here, we need to understand that fifty-two percent of the population is now female in this country. Right. So act accordingly at the polls, ladies. Really. And so you know, I'm you know I'm not your enemy, but I know I'm not in the majority of the idiot male. I hear it all the time. And speaking of idiot males, who was Matthew Hale, the 17th century jurist, Alito in folks and his draft overturning Roe? He was a he was a misogynistic, abusive shitbag who killed witches. This was a uh, believe this was Salem witch trial guy. He also laid the legal foundation. It's right here for clearing husbands from criminal liability for raping their wives. He also, and he sentenced two, two women accused of witchcraft to death. And that actually was a model for the Salem witch trials 30 years later. Oh, okay. This, right. This is, this is fucking fact, folks. Okay. This is who Samuel Alito is, you know, using to justify the overturn of Roe v. Wade, a guy who has been, who is so old that we have a painting of him because photography wasn't invented. Okay. How is, so he's basically saying Matthew Hale, who, had you know defended rape and defended misogyny is deeply rooted in american history is that really what you want well apparently that is exactly what the gop wants these are more stories and again i i urge you to read some of these uh there was there is a documentary out there called the janes i i haven't watched it yet but i'm uh, going to i don't know if we could i don't think we could do a watch party on it because it's hbo i believe but that's about a women who about a group of women who created an underground movement to help women uh transport themselves and and take care of themselves when they had to get uh abortions before it was uh, legal So I want people to understand, again, when Roe v. Wade falls, a lot of these things are going to fall with it because every single one of these cases were argued with the same argument because they knew that they won with it. Okay, that's how this works. That's how the, le that's how the legal system works. And not just in this country, in all countries. It's the way the legal system works. So this was this was the landmark case in regards to gay marriage. Now, right? in Massachusetts, this will be protected if this falls because Massachusetts was actually the first state to legalize same-sex marriage before the Supreme Court case. Right. And again, the plaintiffs in each case argued that the state statutes violated the Equal Protection Clause and the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment and um, talked about uh, right to privacy. So it's going to be argued the same way. Reuters, and again, uh, we're same thing we've been talking about. This is Reuters by Andrew Chung. Right around the same time, May fourth, right after this was uh, was dropped, um, again, gay marriage, interracial marriage, sex, uh, unmarried sex, contraception, abortion, <laughs> and think of this logical uh, path. So you have legislators looking to um, to take away the legalization of gay marriage. 
then they want to make sex illegal um, when you're not married. Then they want to, some want to make it illegal to cohabitate with someone if you are not married. Where do you think this is going? To me, this is the attempted elimination of an entire group. Yeah. You know, the other it's criminalizing thing, the gay community. Yeah. Another thing uh, that is um, <laughs> important to remember is when you're talking about birth control or contraception, um, there are some Republican states who are talking about contraception only be available to married couples. And there are other Republican states who are saying that married couples shouldn't be using contraception. It can go right. either way for you people, you know, especially if they're paranoid about, you know, white people's population falling in America. Right. Initially, and I'll get, the, there's a timeline, so I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, then we get to interracial marriage. These are the lovings, okay? They were arrested under cohabitation laws. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> they were married, and it was not recognized. And they took this to the Supreme Court and they won. Do we really want to go here, folks? Because that's where we're headed. Again, argued under the exact same thing. Again. So, <coughs> pardon me. When Roe v. Wade falls, they're going to be attacks on this as well. Especially. There will be no white supremacist that would ever be in favor of interracial marriage. And, you know, I keep saying it, but I got to say this, you know, the white supremacists have been empowered by the GOP. Yep. Cat's very interested in my, oh, oh, that's right. Get out. All right. So here's a little image. The Republicans pushing the dominoes. The dominoes are going to fall. You get it? It's the Daily Beast, right? Yes. I love this shit. It won't stop with reproductive rights. We must fight back now. This is the, this is the point and the argument. And this is the point and the argument that Deb and I have been making for at least two, three years. These rights need to be solidified. There's no a mushy, nothing. Nope. nope. I, I, I got to say, this is one of the things about direct democracy that turned me off was when I couldn't get people we were working with to agree that these rights were inalienable, truly inalienable, the ones that we wrote. Um, so, you know, no, uh -uh, not going there. I'm not going back into a situation that's just like the one I'm in. So, um, guys, you think that this won't affect you? I don't know if you've ever, uh, you know, uh, played around with a married woman or you're married and you're cheating on your wife or whatever. Not my business. It's not the business of the government either. So there's what, what is called adultery laws and fornication laws. Adultery, obviously, is having sex with another person, either when you're married or having sex with a married person. When is adultery a crime? This, this, these are the states, Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, yep. Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, New York, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. These now, I'm not saying that adultery is right. I have been faithful, ladies, to my wife for 27 years. Calm down. But, you know. This is fucking the, ridiculous. If you want to talk about government overreach, this is government overreach. Okay. Right. This That's, is a fucking, this is a fucking, uh, uh, you know, issue of, you know, 
character or whatever you want to call it. But it's a moral it's, issue, but this is between me and my wife. It's a okay? ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And fornication laws. This is 2022. They're talking about now they're talking about reinstituting the sodomy laws. Oh, wait, but Deb, don't worry about it. A woman's not guilty of adultery if the sex act resulted from a rape. Oh, I'm I'm so you know oh, relieved so to hear that. Have to carry the kid to term because they're not making any exceptions for rape and incest. Okay? Right. So go back one step. I just want to show you something that was up above what when it, what's criminalized in other states. Only the woman is going to be found guilty. There are some states where only the... Where is that? It's further up. Oh, okay, okay. It's Holy Christ. Of states, <laughs> woman. So if you're a married woman, you're the only one that's going to pay the price on that one. Once again, male uh, supremacy. Let me just say it. Right. So we have, you know, different laws or different states. Arizona. Fucking whack jobs. <laughs> now look... Must be all the vibes from Sedona knocking people out of their freaking heads. That fucking state. If, really, uh, that's a lost cause, that state. If your spouse is cheating on you, go after it. Go after their money. That's between you and your spouse. The government, the state should not be involved in this at all. Absurd. Yeah, there we go. Colorado, any sexual intercourse by a married person other than with that person's spouse is adultery, which is prohibited. You know, so blah, blah, blah. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, there you go. Wisconsin, Possibility. $10,000 yeah. in three years in jail. <laughs> So, I said there was all right. I won't even go. This is in regards to contraception, birth control. So, Deb mentioned, um, let's see here. Uh, Griswold versus Connecticut is one of the big ones because it, it gave married couples the right, the constitutional right to privacy that includes the right to use birth control. Unmarried women could still not get it. That that was given to them in 1972, 1973. I and versus Baird. So again, you know, you have to try a try another case in order to get it done sometimes. And it took seven years. Look at this shit. The coercive sterilization of African Americans. You know, you know, people wake up. Wake up, folks. The Committee to End Sterilization Abuse. Okay, now, 1974. Nice great history. No wonder they don't want this shit taught in school. Seriously. Right. They're, you know, sterilizing black women. No wonder they don't want this shit taught. The FDA suspends the sale of the Dawkins Shield. I remember hearing about this. I mean, I was too young to really know about it. After four years on the market, after multiple users develop severe infections, this happens, yep. you know, and they do what they have to do, lawsuits, whatever. But that's what the FDA is for. Right. Not to, you know have a eugenics program or whatever with the vaccine to stop. By the way, IUDs are back on the market because that's one of the things they want to outlaw. They want to, in, in the state, I believe, I think it's Louisiana. It's either Louisiana or Tennessee. Um, they want to make the use of an IUD a murder charge. I believe that's the Louisiana. Right. That's the, 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 the female attorney that posted that. Those of you guys who, who watch, I'm I'm looking for a chart on contraception laws that are looking to be changed. Um, it's not going to happen yet. I'll talk a little bit about it, especially in Tennessee and especially with Marsha Blackburn. Um, they are gearing for this because the it's not overturned yet. Right. These these laws, just so you know, they can't do anything yet. 
They can't do anything until they know once Roe versus Wade is overturned, then that's when these dominoes are going to start to fall and you're going to start to see this kind of stuff. But they're already introducing it. And by the way, they're also they're also instituting legislation so that cases will we'll be, be heard. Be the Supreme Court. Yeah. It is a six to three super majority on the ultra conservative side by design. As Donald Trump openly stated, he was going to pick judges that would overturn Roe v. Wade. I have the statement. Idaho Republican leader said he'd consider banning the morning after pills and IUDs. Absurd. The morning after pill is only, as I said, to prevent a woman from ovulating. It is not an abortion pill. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee signs a bill criminalizing mail-in abortion uh, drugs. As you guys probably know, I have worked for the Postal Service for over 20 years. What I know now is if if you make shipping a product out from a state illegal and into a state illegal, you cannot fly over that state. Right. So the more states that do this, the more difficult it will be to get stuff shipped. I'm just letting you know. So... Uh, this was the Griswold, uh, Connecticut case. This is just birth control for married couples. Again, argued on the point of right to privacy and not gender equality rights or, you know, the, the right to choose. This is just a, a Joanne Sweeney is actually a, an author and a, a journalist that I found. You want to take a look at this again. This is talking about the uh, rise, fall and continuing uses of fornication criminal laws, which means having sex with an unmarried person. Say, so, you know. Someone in our group uh, made the claim that Marsha Blackburn is uh, proposing a bill making a certain contraception illegal. She hasn't done it yet. However, it may be coming. Because I had even escaped my perception at the time. This indicates to me that the right wing politicians knew exactly what was going to happen, knew exactly what to attack, knew exactly what cases to attack, and knew where this was going, and knew what uh, legislation to introduce as Ro Roe v. Wade was falling. Because she is um, honestly. She's, you know, far right rabid. She really is. <clears throat> this, this was the trap that Marsha Blackburn was setting when she interviewed Kentaji Brown Jackson. I'm going to revisit this for a second so you guys can understand what is going on. Much of this, the GOP senator's statement, this is. Marsha Blackburn was forgettable, including Blackburn's claim that she was shocked when Jackson said in writing that she doesn't have a judicial philosophy per se. But in the same video, the Tennessean reading carefully from a teleprompter eventually said something genuinely interesting. And I like the writing there. Oh, um, let me credit. This is Steve Bennon, March of this year. So this is NBC. MSNBC. So this is what she said. Constitutionally unsound rulings like Griswold and Con versus Connecticut and other cases um, confuse Tennesseans and leave Congress wondering who gave the court permission to bypass this, our system of checks and balances. Griswold versus Connecticut and these other cases were 
tried and won before the Supreme Court. <laughs> she is arguing. She is arguing against Griswold versus Connecticut so it can be overturned. Right. Just so you know what's going on. The rhetoric came less than a month after Republican candidates for state attorney general in Michigan also denounced the Griswold versus Connecticut precedent. This is the case. The Griswold versus Connecticut case is the case that was presented to the Supreme Court and won with the with the argument about you know uh, right to privacy in regards to contraception for married couples. Now they're attack, probably attacking this case for married couples because they know that once it's taken away from married couples, unmarried couples, they're going to easily be able to win that. This is just a little more uh, explanation of what Griswold versus Connecticut was, which we've gone over, 1965. So remember folks, knowledge is power. Speaking of which, codifying Roe v. Wade. Again, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, Biden is going to try, uh, and by the way, Stop going to Chuck Schumer's house. Don't bother him. He's trying. He's an ally. I understand you might. I don't agree with him on everything. He's not an ally with me in regards to uh, boycott the vest sanction. I get that. I understand that. But with this, he is an ally. Stop it. Okay. By the way, so this say this. You're never going to agree with everybody on everything um, on on a political on the political front. You're just not going to. Okay. Right. So this is uh, from a Boston University a School of Law professor uh, talking about what it means to codify Roe versus Wade. Now, I don't know if they would even be able to codify nationally because this is all based on states' rights and all of that. I don't want to get into that argument, but... Each state is going to have to put it into law in regards to abortion. But understand this, once they do that, they have to go to each individual right, the right to contraceptive for everyone, the right. I, I don't think that it would be prudent to make it an umbrella issue and try to make it for everybody. Um, personally, I would say you have to put in laws for each individual issue, contraception, um, sex out of wedlock, which is insane to me, honestly, um, gay marriage, gay rights, uh, interracial marriage. So all of and abortion, all of it individually state by state by state this is it's not just about abortion it's not just about Roe Wade or Casey versus Planned Parenthood this is bigger than that so I am just floating this out there you're hearing the right you know talking about how moral they are or how you know whatever I want people to understand this. There are laws out there. There are ways for old white men to be pedophiles in this country. And there are laws in state by state by state allowing, with parental permission, old white or older white men generally to marry underaged girls yep. massachusetts just just passed the 18 age law what a week ago up right. until that point it's 12 years old for a girl and 14 for a boy in massachusetts with parental approval but most of the 1200 marriages in massachusetts that took place between 2000 
and I believe it was 2018, were older men married to young girls. And I mean young girls, not 20 year old girls, not 25 year old girls. I'm talking about children. Right. I want to read this. So this is from Equality Now, A Just World for Women and Girls, Child Marriage in the United States. Uh, only four states, U.S. states, meet the standard and the federal government provides child marital exception for statutory rape. Okay. And I will breathe that again in a minute. Child marriage occurs when one or both parties or both part of the parties to the marriage are below the age of 18. Child marriage is currently legal. This has not been updated, so it's 43 states now. Um, Delaware, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and now Massachusetts, who just made it illegal, mm -hmm. have set the minimum age at 18, eliminated all exceptions. 20 U.S. states do not require any minimum age for marriage with a parental or judicial waiver. I also believe... Correct me if I'm wrong, and we should maybe look this up if we don't have it here. Um, I believe it might be, once again, Tennessee that is looking to remove age limits. One state is moving to remove, remove age limits for marriage. I'm not sure, uh, but I, I could check that out. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I think it is. I think I read it somewhere when I was working on the website, and I bookmarked it, but I never got back to it. So Right. Nearly 300,000 children were married in the United States between 2000 and 2018. The vast majority were girls wed to adult men, many much older. And again, this is legalized pedophilia. And let me just tell you something. <laughs> there is a vast difference between a 12-year-old girl and an 18-year-old man. Okay? There is six years difference there. That's a big difference. All right. It, it, I'm not just talking about, you know, 40 year old men. I, I'm saying people. And then we, we want to believe that they really care about the children. <laughs> I'm going to bring this up again, because that's one of the fallacies. I'm going to talk about some of the fallacies and some of the things that we're going to have to uh, combat uh, in arguments. Uh, the caring about the children is one of them. I want to make this absolutely clear. The statutory rape exception. Statutory rape is one, one of the parties to sexual activity is below the age of consent. Does not have to be forcible because a minor is not legally able to consent. So they talk about 18 USC section 2243 of the sexual abuse of a minor applies when a person knowingly engages in a sexual act with another person who's between the ages of 12 or six and 16 and is at least four years younger than the perpetrator. <coughs> so another, uh, you know, por portion of uh, law allows a defense to this crime when the persons engaged in the sexual act were at the time married to each other. That means at the federal level, child marriage is viewed as a valid defense to statutory rape. Right. <clears throat> so the law not only suggests that the federal government condones the practice of child marriage, it allows an adult to engage in sexual activity with children as, low, as young as 12. And by the way, I don't not to get crazy into this. I don't know how many uh, states have bigamy laws. I know, you know, that was an, I think that was an issue in Utah or whatever. So you can have a guy married to multiple girls. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't want to like make this a showcase of it, but I want people to understand the hypocrisy of this. Yeah. Marriage should be 18, period. Because these girls, once they get into marriage, they can't divorce until they're 18. Right. 
So if you have a 12 year old child that gets married and is being abused, you can't file for divorce until she's 18 years old. Okay, that's the way it works. She's not considered an adult, but she can get married. I will be talking more about trigger laws and what states are going to be affected with Roe v. Wade, the timing of Roe v. Wade. I, they're talking about June may be the decision. Right. We'll see. Uh, who knows? They might drag it on until after the election. <laughs> who knows? I don't know. Um, so 26 states are certain or li likely to ban abortion. That includes 13 that already have laws in place. They're called trigger laws. As soon as Roe v. Wade is overturned, bam, those states make it illegal. Well, I don't like, know. Why did you say this? Yeah. If they drag this out beyond the election, don't be fooled by this. It doesn't mean that it's going to change the ruling. It just means oh. it's been done for political expediency. You need to vote out the GOP anyway. Okay? Anyway, this is done. That would be done to try to keep some of the Republicans in. It is indeed. So it's it's possible. I, I I don't have any information on it, but again, that's just an opinion that it might happen. Here's something that I found that was amazing. It's just you guys. People who watch these kind of videos are always worried about surveillance, always worried about that kind of stuff. OK. Fine. This is from BuzzFeed News. In a Pulse Row America, Googling abortion could put you at risk. So you go on your phone, you search for you know, abortions. And you could be tracked, especially if it's illegal in your state and if it's illegal for you to leave your state and go to another state to get an abortion. Right. So feel free to, to read this at your leisure. Get a VPN. Yeah. Yep. But the fact that you would even have to think about doing that, by the way, again, First Amendment rights, information, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Remember all those arguments? Now, the another reality is lobbying. OK, don't think that Amy Coney Barrett isn't lobbying, she is. Don't think that uh, Clarence Thomas isn't lobbying, he is. So, let me see here. And I am all for these people. <clears throat> uh, <I'm> <laughs> On the pro Roe v. Wade side, it, you know, you can bet your life the right wingers are going to be pouring money into this. The left needs to pour money into this. It's just the way it is. Not only that, but support, all, whether it be through your money, through your vote, through both, whatever. Uh, there might be a candidate that you really like in California. You live in Idaho or Massachusetts or New York or whatever. I live in New York. I like a candidate in California. Give them a couple of bucks. You know, so and we need to get over Act Blue and Emily's List and all of that, too, at least for now, because well, that's because I'm just going to also tell you another thing, too. There's this thing called reporting. And a lot of the reasons why these groups exist is because they have to be reporting this to the Federal Election Commission. So get over it, folks. Get over it. It's the it's way it, it. Works. it works on both sides of the coin this way. <laughs> we tried. We tried. And, and this is just the way it is right this second. This is the fight right now. You want to talk about getting money out of politics? This is not the time to do it because while we're trying to get out money out of politics on the left side. You're spending it on the right. 
The, yep. the money's never coming out of politics because the right will never agree to it. I'm going to tell you right now. This is the uh, 3.14 action. Add your name if you're supporting defending Roe at all costs. Sonia Sotomayor did, um, did give her permission to put her image on here. So just saying. I'll take there's it. a there's a it hey they have a right to do this you can't you cannot when you have people on the other side doing it you start doing it don't i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it uh i will be talking about some of the other races later this is an article in regards to some of the uh, some of the uh people yeah, now let me just say, uh, let me just say something about Lisa Murkowski. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Susan Collins. Yeah. I I have been, you know, I find Lisa Murkowski far more tolerable than Susan Collins, but the notion that these two women uh, are now, you know, Lisa Lisa Murkowski said her her. I believe the way she put it was her the her foundation has been shaken by the court. She's literally stunned by what they did. Um, but my feeling is uh, that the reality of all of this is that Donald Trump openly stated in 2016 that he would appoint justices for the express purpose of overturning Roe v. Wade. So, okay, when we got down to the, you know, um, the procedure for putting these people in, you know, they all said they would rule on precedent. You know, did they lie? Yes, they yep. did. <laughs> why, would you, why would you honestly fucking trust anybody that a man who told 30,573 lies why would you trust anybody that he would suggest? If you believe in women's rights and he's already said that he wanted to stack the court to overturn Roe v. Wade, then you reject these people out of hand. You know, done. Done deal. Don't whine to me, Argentina, now. Okay? You're not absolved. Now, again, Samuel Alito, uh, Neil Gorsuch, also, he says he's a strict constitutionalist. Now I understand what that meant. OK, they're saying that the rights of minorities are not based in constitutional canon right. because they didn't have those rights back then. Right. And because because, frankly, the writers and the constructors of the Constitution were what? Slave owners. Exactly. And at the time, and by the way, all of these, all of these egregious laws, uh, there was a, a, a law against an Asian uh, American gentleman who was uh, born in the United States and they tried to kick him out of the country and he won a Supreme Court case. There were bl uh, blacks were considered two thirds a person. They weren't considered a person, okay? They were fucking sold from storefronts, folks. You know, this is the history they don't want you to know, but frankly, they're telling you right now that this country is only made for white males. They're telling you this in what they're doing. They're stating it. If you can't see it by now, I can't help you. Right. Now... Uh... Yeah, I, I I don't I don't really I don't really understand what people don't get from this. Basically, these Supreme Court justices are astounding some some of the Republicans by how blatantly prejudiced they are and bigoted they are. Yeah. So and Samuel Alito, who who 
talks about a misogynistic person and an abuser who, by the way, wasn't a rent or wasn't uh, he, he wasn't like a prominent figure of the Constitution. So why are you even bringing him up when you're talking about precedent? Right. It's it's absurd. Uh, I want people again. We've we've said this over and over again. You have to vote. You don't think about uh, who leaked it, who didn't leak it. it. It doesn't matter at this point. Right. We know we know the information. We know what's going on now. Right. Um, and also, oh well, you know, um, don't worry about the temperature, the climate, all that crap. <clears throat> All you know is what could potentially happen. Now you have the roadmap to what could potentially happen. This is not just about abortion. Right. This is about reproductive and this, you know, sexual behavior of every person here having that controlled by you, uh, controlled by the government. The government has no business telling you who you can have sex with in terms of consenting adults by the way and again it is absolutely asinine that they're telling you that you can't have sex with another consenting adult but a 47 year old man can marry a 12 year old girl and have sex with her right precisely what the fuck all right so here's the last Last one, I'm going to then talk very briefly about our group. So we're we're talking about the climate, how this could really invigorate the left. This is going to invigorate the right. The right's going to go out and vote. They're going to go nuts. They see winning here. They smell blood in the water. People need to be aware of this. The only they way they win, however, is if the left fails to do its job. Okay? Because they are not in the minority. I mean, they're not in the majority, the right wing. Right. This guy, this Robert Reagan guy, he's small potatoes. He's one drop in the bucket. And as I said, make sure that this guy doesn't get in another office in Michigan, but make sure that you vote out as many of these people as humanly possible. The McEachins of the world, Arizona, just vote all of Arizona out at this point. Marjorie Taylor Greene. I mean, we are the weakest sex. She has said that now three times. Okay. Madison Cawthorn, who now is resplendent with a sex tape. Gay, but we've now seen him naked with other men. Oh, we oh, were, were just clowning around. Yeah, sure you are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking unbelievable. It just never stops. And the hypocrisy is amazing. It really it's is. Astounding. It really is. So this could potentially invigorate, especially like in Idaho, Nevada, you know, all these guys who are just Texas, all of these states, whatever you got to do, get out and vote. I, see this I know how in the picture. You know what? I get that he did the right thing about the election in 2020. This guy's yeah. a shitbag. All right. He this is. guy is a shitbag and he is going to run. He's ramping up his campaign right now, all right? Do you remember in Indiana when he was trying to push against gay marriage? Do you remember, um, you gamers out there, I don't know if there's anybody listening to me that's a gamer, Gen Con, huge game convention, huge cosplay convention. He wanted to ban cosplay because it promoted gay marriage. The NCAA, I don't know if they pulled out. I don't think they did, but they were talking about boycotting Indiana, pulling pulling the uh, the tournament out of Indiana. Gen Con was talking about pulling out of Indiana because the guy who ran Gen Con happened to be gay. By, um, by the way, yeah. he let a lot of people get sick and die from AIDS because he was so against needle exchange programs. Yeah. Because he was so against drugs that he wouldn't allow that program to go through in his state. You know what, folks? Wake the fuck up, really, okay? They don't even have any, any 
humanity in their soul, the right wing, not one ounce. Right. So I want to end. This is going to be a long fight, but I want people to know that number one, I'll help you in any way that I can, no matter what state you're in. I understand the importance of organizing. I've been a union organizer for a very long time. Uh, this is something that Deb put up on our on our group, uh, you know, the Roe v. Wade group. Mother's Day strikes from May 8th to May 15th. Um, don't buy stuff. Yeah, and, and basically said I can't pull up the rest of the document. That's it. It's as simple as that. Well, women make up 51% of the population. Stop spending your money for one week. I already filled my car for the week. I've already done all my food shopping for the week. I'm right. good. I'm not spending any money. This is this is a a small price to pay for what we're doing here. It's just save your money. Stop spending. And by the way, <clears throat> um, we're going to talk eventually about the money behind all this too, because that needs to be right. that needs to be talked about. There are corporations who donate to the people who were involved in January 6, 2021. There are people, there are co corporations and, and other entities that donate to people who supported the overturn of Roe v. Wade. We need to talk about those companies in specific. Yep. And, and the, basically the PAC groups, uh, there was one individual, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name in the group, but she, uh, there are a lot of fantastic TikTokers out there. I'm, I see you, I, I see you uh, talking about Roe v. Wade and also talking about the, what was the group, uh, Defense of the American Family or something? Oh, yeah, yeah I, know, I know it's, um, yeah, there's two groups. I can't remember their name specifically, but I know. But we'll be we'll Tony be talking about those guys. One of them, Tony Perkins's group. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But those groups we're going to be talking about. We're well, going to be talking a ton of money into this. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, Amy Coney Barrett said it herself. Now we take it to the states. Now we take the battle to the states. So if you don't think that Amy Coney Barrett is invested in this. You're nuts. That's why he chose her. She literally belongs to a Catholic fucking cult. All right. Not, not just a Catholic religion, a cult. This is our group. Um, and I understand. I, I will, again, as I said, we will help you guys organize as we can. We're, we're looking at stuff. Please, uh, if, if you guys are looking to um, organize in certain stage, you can't find whatever. I'd love to create a database and try to get you guys together. Like, let's say I, get, I we get five people from Louisiana to say, hey, I live in wherever. And we will get your permission and you guys can DM each other and maybe you can get together. Who knows? Um, this is a long fight, though. Understand that. I've been doing this with Deb for what? Since 2018. Deb's been doing this forever. Okay. Since at least the eighties, maybe earlier. So understand this will never, the fight will never end. You get like these big victories or whatever. They're not going to end. I don't know, Deb, if you want to, um, Maybe do something on the website tomorrow when it's up and screen share it tomorrow. It's too, too late, Mac. We don't want it's to two that. hours. I mean, yeah. um, I told you it's going to be two hours. I knew it. Let me just say that, that, that in closing, um, you know, somebody said that, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to save my vote. You know what, folks? Look, let, let's, oh. let's just say, let me just say this. We need to get over this. You know something? You are never going to have. It doesn't really matter. If we were to take the slate right now today, wipe it clean, get rid of the Democrats, get rid of the Republicans, come in with two brand new parties or three brand new parties, what you're going to have is a repetition of what exists now because there are always going to be people within all of these entities who are A, evil, 
or B, self-serving. It's part of what is human nature. You are never going to have, we are never going to have utopia. It doesn't really matter. There are countries that are better to live in than the United States, but they don't have utopia. Okay. In Switzerland, where they actually have direct democracy, they still have a parliament because the people can't fucking handle self-rule. All right. What they get to do in Switzerland, however, is the people get to vote on certain bills, right. whether they pass or whether they don't. But nobody has, nobody that's a direct democracy has fucking, you know, total control by the people. We can't even get people to read bills, let alone write bills. Right. So stop it, okay? It, that's a lie, and I, and I know that. We, we've been through that whole direct democracy routine. We wasted the, entire years on that. The, in, the, in, the instant that the people we were working with said that they were not willing to um to endorse the rights Broadway or sign off on and with rights nope and then when they started suggesting that the way we could solve all of our problems is to kill billionaires that wasn't happening with my group on it i'm sorry folks the people helped to create those billionaires so let's understand that none of this happens in a vacuum right you want to stop creating billionaires Stop buying product. That's how you do this. Now, this was a two-hour uh, extravaganza, so feel free to break this up. <laughs> but it has but to be done. It, it has to be done, best. and we're going to be doing this for for at least another week, two weeks. Right. There's a lot. There's there's the political side of it. There's the money side of it. There are the these propaganda um, ideas that people need to get out of their head that, you know, these women's, oh, well, they just need to stop sleeping around. Stop that. Number one, stop this crap about, you know, uh, men's rights. And yeah, I mean, stop it. Just, <laughs> we, we know what's going on. Okay. Oh, and by the way, my favorite one to all of those who continue to listen to us, who were previously with us on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, cut the shit about this being a distraction and the real thing is vaccines and yeah. masks and all that. Stop it. Yeah. Anyone who is coming, who is asking to friend me and I start seeing anti-vax stuff and anti-mask stuff on my, on my timeline, I will drop you immediately. This is not the same thing. Oh, well, Roe v. Wade is the exact same thing as vaccine because it's a you know, right to body issue. It is different. If I have to go into that, I will go into that, too. Not now because it's late, but I will go into that. It's not different. We're not talking about, public, well, you're talking about the health of the unborn child, blah, blah, blah. It's not the same. Right. It isn't. So. Okay, gang. I'm going to end this recording, children. It's been lovely spending the night with you.